Well, good morning. We are in the truck ready to head it over there. It's about 6.38 in the morning. And I actually had to get in the truck and put heat on because it's flipping cold, or at least it feels cold. I don't know, it's probably still like 60 degrees, but man, it feels cold, not used to it. But anyway, uh, had a comment that came through that I saw this morning on one of the YouTube channels <clears throat> about the power of the game today versus yesterday. The problem with the comment was that they were talking about how today's power and the talent levels and everything are much lower today than they were back in the day. And I guess they're getting this because of, you know, the pancake weight blocks. They didn't have the big giant bowling balls to help them out, you know, to create more ball reaction and all that stuff. But um, just because you see, just because you see these giant bowling balls, that doesn't necessarily mean that they had more power back in the day. And actually it's by far the opposite of that. Some, I mean, hitting up on the ball is not power. Hitting up on the ball is not creating revolutions, those types of things. So you bring up the guys like uh, Mark Roth and, and Pete Weber, where, yeah, back in the day, those guys were the powerful guys. Those were the higher up guys. You know, they maybe had 400. Uh, Pete's not even 400 now. I mean, not that him, maybe he maybe his rev rate went a little bit down, but I mean it, it's still it's been the same for a while now, and it's nothing against those guys at all. But we're talking we're just strictly talking about the power of today versus yesteryear, and the power of today is just so effortless. The power of today is just so so smooth and and, and continuous, and it can just make the ball do some crazy things. And you say, well, if if you'd like to see how these guys do back in the day with pancake weight blocks, you would see them dominate more than what they are today. You take Belmo and force everybody to throw, you know, pancake weight blocks and everything, you know, plastic or rubber or even urethane or any of that stuff. He's just, he's going to dominate in, in today's world. So, um, especially if you're using today's patterns compared to what they were back in the day. So, you know, we could we could go back and forth on this. There's all kinds of things we could discuss on this, but uh, I just I don't see I don't see where or how the power of yesterday is anything close to today. I mean, it's just they're two different games. Uh, it's just like trying to compare LeBron to to Michael Jordan. Like it just you can't do it because the the game was completely different back then compared to what it is now. I do believe that if you put LeBron in MJ's era where you know, it was a lot more physical. I think LeBron is even that much more dominant back then because he's just that much bigger of a guy. He's that much more powerful and strong than of a guy <clears throat> with the same type of, you know, handles. But either way, that, that's, <laughs> we're not talking basketball here, but I really don't think that, I don't think that the, the players of the past could keep up with the power game of today. Um, but I think that the power game of today could keep up with the players of the past when it came to those conditions. So, but I mean, that's a, that's a debate that could always be up in the air. We, we don't truly know. We'll never actually know. I just think that the power of today would be able to create more room for error and they would throw pins around even more. And, you know, the, the accuracy is... They would, yeah. I mean, and they would just create more room for error. It would, they wouldn't create what they create like with reactive bowling balls, but it would still be a lot more than what some of these guys did before. And I think that's kind of like what what Mark Roth was able to do was create a little room for error. He had a higher rev rate, so he could miss to the right a little bit and still get it to go around the corner. But also at the same time, I think in some instances he was probably forced to play the lanes a little bit different and play further left, while everybody else was able to play a little bit further, a little bit straighter. I mean, you'll see times where Pete is just absolutely firing the ball up the outside to get the ball to do what he wants it to do, to be able to stay further right. Because he could have moved left and slowed down and curved it, but why? I mean, you've got entry angle. When you can play straighter, it's always greater. It's always better to, not, maybe not always, but you know, the times you can play straighter and create room for error and still get the ball to go through the pins, you probably should because you are creating easier angle you know sometimes you can create more room for error um 
So I don't know. I mean, it's just up for debate. What do you guys think? Does do the do the players of last year, of yesteryear, you think they can keep up with the guys from today, with the big power games of today? Because we're talking rev rates in the fives and six hundreds compared to big power games back in the day that were 350, 400. So I don't know. I mean, like Robert Smith was, you know, he was a 500 guy in those big heydays, but he also wasn't dominant either. So I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about this because, I mean, Robert Smith created some crazy, some crazy ball reaction and stuff, but I mean, he really wasn't dominant at all, you know, back when nobody had his kind of rev rate. So I don't know. I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. We'll see. I don't know. But anyway, let me know what you think. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to head to the bowling center now, get ready to bowl for the regional today. And uh, yeah, hopefully it goes well because we're bowling on a longer pattern. So I'm using a bunch of surface. Going to try to stay a little bit straighter and see what happens. So I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later.